I'm Sarah Thorncroft. I'm the Executive Director of West Volusia Historical Society. Uh, we're trying something a little new today. We're not reopened quite yet to welcome our visitors or researchers back, but we're broadcasting live from our Henry DeLand House. I'm joined today by Deborah McShane, our Vice President, Membership Chair, Reenactor, Docent, Local DeLand All around girl. volunteer girl. And uh, today we're going to talk to you about our Hoosier cabinet. One thing that we've noticed as everybody's been quarantining themselves, staying sheltered, staying safe, uh, that they're really starting to bake a lot more. And that kind of got me thinking about one of the more interesting pieces in our collection here. So Deb, what exactly is a Hoosier cabinet and why were they popular? Well, uh, Hoosier cabinets started to be made mm -hmm. right after the Civil War. There was a real uh, movement toward efficiency and compactness. Kitchens were pretty small, and um, there was a desire to have things be modern and efficient. And really? so actually a number of companies started uh, in Indiana, and this is really rather an interesting thing as to why they were all based in Indiana. There really was the Hoosier Manufacturing Company, which was the biggest, but there were 40 other companies hmm. that were manufacturing through about the 1930s when they fell out of favor. But so from the late 1800s, and our cupboard is from 1903, and it was donated to the DeLand House by Evangeline Crum and uh, Arla McDonald. So we'd like to say thank you to them. So they were made out of um, pine, oak, and later just porcelain, and the one that we have is made of oak. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are in all the cupboards that make it an all-in-one kind of baking cabinet? Well, ours is really rather a super duty one. Um, first of all, we have this really nice workspace and ours has a zinc top on it that can be pulled out. And this is absolutely great because it made the more workspace typically um, the mother or housewife uh, would be able to, there's not a lot of, there's not other built-in cupboards. There's a stove maybe and another work table, but this was the all-in-one, Sarah, and so they would be able to pull out this cupboard, have their little um, stool, and as they're prepping, um, making their pies or breads or whatever is going on, this is extra workspace and very easy to clean. So here, the biggest thing with our cupboard, as I said, it's kind of a super duty, is, and they've got really nice little cupboards, is that we have, you can see me here still, <laughs> it's a 25 pound um, bin to store flour. And especially at this time, and then there's a sifter, I'm gonna scoot around here, a sifter here, now I'm gonna push this back in. To, get in. So you can sift, you put your big bowl here, down here, you can see that. Sifting away, because especially in that time period, flour was not bromated. So uh, typically there would be like little bugs and weevils and things like that. And so you definitely, people today so much time don't sift their flour. Hmm. Uh, but back in the late 1800s, turn of the century through the 20s, definitely wanted to be sifting their flour. So 25 pounds, that's what we've got that you can put in there. Um, get up on a stool, put it in through the top. The other thing that we have here is a, a bin for sugar, and then maybe some tea or something like that, but it was all built in. And then typically, the cupboards also came with, um, the Hoosier cupboards themselves, came with glassware. Mm. They would have little storage containers for holding your coffee and tea and spices. And it, everything is built in so that we have here there's the spice rack and um, other storage space for main things. And ours is made of um, oak. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I just want to give out a shout out to Jamie and Travis. They've tuned in to uh, watch our broadcast <laughs> here. Thanks, guys. Uh, looks like she's saying hi to you. Hey. Uh, so do we know if any of these pieces here would have been original to this Hoosier cabinet? Or um, has this collection just kind of come to us in bits and pieces as the I museum was being founded? This is bits and pieces. Oh, okay. But this is a 1903, and um, this house was built in 86, I believe. 
1886. 1886, absolutely, 1886. But um, I think one of the most fun things about uh, the concept of this is how the efficiency factor. So these kind of became outdated, actually, in about the oh. 1930s when they were starting to really streamline kitchens. But prior to that time, it was like, hey, everything in one place. And so what do you mean by streamlining a kitchen? Is that building in cabinets built in and really making just one room in your house the kitchen? Right. Absolutely, okay. Absolutely. And having that kind of a storage space. Because the other thing, whether you'd be able to see here too, they might have shelves on the wall where you would have had some pots and pans and things like that. But underneath here, areas for um, holding your dish rags and pots and pans down below storage. Here we have a wonderful old rolling pin for my pies. Um, but I think with one of the, can't get it back in, Sarah. <laughs> it is deep enough to get it in here. There she goes. Um, The really fun thing uh, that I'd read was in the Ladies' Home Journal that mm -hmm. they were saying one of the biggest things that if you got a Hoosier cupboard, you could save the lady of the house 1,500 to 2,000 steps a day instead of having to run around everywhere and find things. That everything could be consolidated <laughs> in this one space. And I think it's so interesting now for everybody uh, with an Apple Watch and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Everyone's trying to increase their their um, footprint of the day to 10,000 steps a day. Right. But they're saying that for the overworked housewife of the time, she could have everything here. She wouldn't have to be running hither, thither, and yon uh, to, to grab all of her ingredients. Right. So. so is there anything else that we want to talk about with our Hoosier cabinet or kitchen work back into the early 20th century? Well, what do you know? Um, can you come on in here? Sure. I can see in the in the screen too. Um, what do you know about the Hoosier concept and uh, the name Hoosier? All that I know is that a Hoosier is a person from Indiana, and I guess it makes sense if all the manufacturers were based out of Indiana that this would be called a Hoosier cabinet. Yeah. Uh, and so even though the Hoosier company was the main manufacturer, it's really true that whether it was made by the Boone Company, the Evanson Company, they all ended up going by the name of that. And um, a really fun thing that I found about Hoosiers mm -hmm. is that even within the state itself, there's like three or four different stories about where it comes from mm -hmm. and um, that the area was first settled by uh, in people who'd come from England and a lot of them settled down into the southern part of Indiana, up into the mountains there. And there was one story about when the surveyors would come through, sort of like early census takers, there were a lot of squatters in the area, people there, and mm -hmm. they'd call out, who's there? Who's there? Who's there? And that's one of the stories about uh, what it was. There was a man named uh, John Finley who became a mayor uh, in, uh, it's called Newcastle, that's the area mm. where the Hoosier uh, Company settled. He became the mayor there in 1832 and he published a poem. It's really rather lengthy, but I have a couple of stanzas oh, okay. I'd like to read for you. All right. If I may. Yeah, absolutely. And he called this poem the Hoosier's Nest. And actually, this was the first time that the word Hoosier went into print. So this oh, was written wow. in 32. He says, I'm told in writing, riding somewhere west, a stranger found a Hoosier's nest. In other words, a Buckeye cabin. Just big enough to hold Queen Mab in. Its situation, low but airy, was on the border of a prairie. And fearing he might be benighted, he hailed the house and then alighted. The Hoosier met him at the door. Their salutations soon were o'er. He took the stranger's horse aside and to a sturdy sapling tied. Then having stripped the saddle off, he fed him in a sugar trough. The stranger stooped to enter in the entranced closing with the pin, and manifested strong desire to seat him by the log heap fire where half a dozen Hoosieroos 
with mush and milk, tin cups and spoons, hmm. were sitting waiting to hear the story. So he used the term of the Hoosier as the um, settler in mm -hmm. the area of those mountains in uh, right. uh, South Indiana. But um, like I said, one of the really most fun things was um, the idea that efficiency Yes. And that there was actually that study, and it was like the U.S. Department of Commerce did the study and found that it saved uh, that, that many steps for the housewife. Another, I think, kind of really neat thing is mm -hmm. that, you know, we're kind of having the living history here, but um, probably in about the 1970s, it, the Hoosier cabinet became kind of an ultimate collectible. Really? And so actually in a lot of houses now that are, you know, very modern and have um, sleek cabinetry and things like that. But a lot of times that people will have in their pantry or just leave a space and then be able to bring an antique cupboard like this in. Because actually it's, it's a, it is a great storage space and mm -hmm. workspace. And so it's not just an artifact to look at. Right. Um, but anyway, it's really lovely to have it here in the Deland House because I think we've talked about that um, originally the house had an outdoor kitchen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can only imagine how hot it would get in here during summer, having to cook over a hot stove. And I think in a future Going Live episode, we're going to talk about that. Are we, aren't we, Deb? We will. All we right. Will. We're going to talk about that. And the one thing I'm going to say is that um, the Hoosier Company, getting off the screen here a little bit, um, by the 1920s, uh, they were making over 600 cupboards a day oh, wow. and getting them out there and had the whole thing to do with um, you know, the concept of efficiency, but the whole idea of like industrialization, being able to have a factory where the cabinetry is actually being made, well mm -hmm. made, but kind of on an assembly line and that there were you know, truckers and stores, everything lined up right. so that you could get them moved out to the hinterlands mm -hmm. to as far South as Deland, Florida. Yeah. To get a Hoosier covered there. Well, and I wonder if any of our viewers or future viewers will have any questions. You can always post those in the comments here. Um, we're live right now, so anything you type to us is popping up. Karen Long's been watching us, it looks like. Hi, Karen. Hey, Karen. Good, Good to see you. you. Um, so hopefully somebody will ask a question that we can answer mm -hmm. or. Um, you know, when do we think we'll be broadcasting next? Maybe another week or two? Yeah, I think we're going to try to do things, and, and as Sarah said, this is like numero uno, um, trying to do this, and so we, we actually are just setting up our first tripod. We don't have a zoom angle, or we don't actually have a camera person working with us. So. But anyway, it's it's fun. There's so many neat things about uh, Deland House and being mm -hmm. able to talk about them, and uh, right. since most of us are still fairly housebound, it's kind of fun to be able to right. check out what's here. Yeah, well, and we know everybody's been missing coming out here. We've been missing seeing everybody. Um, but since we're not getting any questions coming in, I think we're gonna sign off for the we're day. We're gonna sign off. We've been planning that you know we'll we'll actually make just really short little conversations, and uh, other people may be coming in. Maybe Karen Long will come in and do the next one. But that we would have um, you know 10 to 12, 15 minute uh, pieces, and that we could be um, chatting with you live if if you do come on. So. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.